Hey guys, how's it going? I am in the garden today. I'm feeling so much better. Um, I'm actually, I feel like I'm back to 100% and I feel good. I'm ready to be in the garden. And um, I thought, since I'm feeling better, let's not push it too hard, but um, let's go over some of the plants that I'm gonna be on the lookout for this year. I picked seven, I narrowed it down <laughs> um, because uh, I felt like I had to narrow it down. My list was gonna be way too long if I hadn't narrowed it down. Um, I probably could have gone to like 25 different plants that I'm gonna be on the lookout for this year. And so these are gonna be the annuals that I'm gonna be on the lookout for, the top seven that I really would like to find. Um, I'm probably gonna have really good luck finding them over at Wintour Gardens, do you guys know, right here. Um, I go there all the time. They're like a 40 minute drive from me and they carry a ton of proven winters plants so if you're in the area winter gardens it's up in like redding and the plant selection of proven winters is absolutely amazing so i'm probably going to be shopping there a ton this year um because they have really cool stuff they have really unique things and they carry a lot of the proven winter stuff i'm actually staring at one of the plants that i bought from them let me show you this is my bay tree i bought a bay tree from them i love this little bay tree so much it smells so good. We haven't used any of it. I'm actually surprised that it's holding onto its leaves. I didn't know it was an evergreen. So I got this from there, but I love it. Anyways, let's go over the seven plants that, that I'm going to be on the hunt for. I'm going to try to find them and I'm gonna try to find them very early in the growing season. It is uh, really funny because it feels like I should already be planting things because it is sunny out and it's warm out. I don't even know if I'm gonna need this jacket on for the entire video. <laughs> Uh, which I know some of you guys are going to be really annoyed about. <laughs> okay, let's get into it. The first one is a tried and true, and of course it's on my list. It is Supertunia Vista Bubblegum. How could it not be on my list? It had to be on the list. It is an amazing plant. I have grown it pretty much every single year since I first found it, which was about four years ago. And it's amazing. It takes off, it does what it needs to do, and it's it's foolproof. You know, I have yet to have one that doesn't do what it's supposed to do. I did grow it this year in a much smaller container, so it didn't have enough like root space, but it still got quite large and we got a ton of blooms from it. And so I'm I'm never mad at a Super Tunia Vista bubblegum. I'm never mad at any Vista from Proven Winners, but specifically the bubblegum, no other petunia does what bubblegum does hands down it's just it's one of a kind so let's go over the specs of them really quick they get about 12 i'm gonna look this way because i have my computer right there because <laughs> i'm not gonna remember the specs of every single one of these 12 inches to two feet tall and two to three feet wide which is very true they usually stay on the like foot tall for me and then they usually definitely get like the three feet wide that is very very true and you're gonna want to plant this in full sun the more sun you give it the better it's going to perform. I had planted it one year in an area that like got a little bit of shade. Wrong choice. It didn't perform nearly as well as the one that gets like cooked. It wants that hot sun. It still got big. Um, it just didn't put out as many blooms. So the more sun you give it, the better it's going to perform. And also fertilizing is very important for these. I just love it. I love the like big sea of pink that you get from it. Pink is probably one of my favorite colors in the garden. Besides green, I love green. But pink is my favorite for flowers. Um, I grow a ton of pink flowers. And we had done the Super Tunia Vista bubblegum one year up at the very front where I'm growing a ton of tulips. And it was so spectacular. Everyone loved it. You could see it from the street, which is funny because we still have a fence that's like right up above it, kind of blocking it. And people could see it and everyone wanted to know what it was. So if you want one that has big impact, Super Tunia Vista bubblegum is um, top of my list to try to find this year. The next one is one that I haven't grown in the garden, but I'm really excited to see if I can get my hands on it. It says that it's new in garden centers this year, so I don't know if it'll be easy for me to find. I doubt it'll be that easy to find, but I'm still gonna be on the hunt for it. It's my number two, it's called Campfire Marshmallow Bidens, and it's a hybrid. I've never grown a Biden before. And um, this one, I had seen it in a mass. Um, I actually saw it from Laura, I saw it on her Instagram and I fell in love with it. I was like, oh my gosh, what is that? It's so beautiful. It's the Campfire Marshmallow Biden, and I loved it. It gets eight to 14 inches tall and spreads 16 to 20 inches wide. Beautiful plant, especially in the mass in the landscape. It says that it like self cleans, so after the blooms are done, it's not gonna hold on to the blooms, which is really nice, it'll let them go. I have a hard time 
bringing white blooms into the garden because if it holds on to them then you just get these brown crispy blooms and I don't think that's a good look in any garden dead blooms and so this one itself cleans which is really really nice it wants as much sun as possible and it can handle some drought conditions but not a whole lot so um, if you have an area that stays a little bit drier than the others this is probably a really good plant for it. I would plant like them in mass underneath my elder tree because the elder tree gets full sun and um, it stays a little bit drier because the tree sucks up so much moisture right there. So I think that that would be a really good one to add. And um, what else? It says that it's a little bit larger than some of the other Bidens. So I don't know anything about Bidens. I've never grown them before, so I'd be really excited to grow these ones if they perform that well and they looked that pretty. So. That's one I'm going to be on the lookout for. The next plant that we're going to be on the lookout for is a coleus. And I could do a whole video on coleus. Um, there's another plant coming up that I could do a whole video on. I love coleus so much. They are one of my favorite things to add into the garden. The one I'm going to be on the lookout for this year is called Wicked Witch. And it is so beautiful. The first year I had gotten my hands on them, I got one. That is all I was able to find and it performed so well i was so excited by it and then i found it again i found i think like six of them the next year and i was shocked at how well they did especially in like a nice mass drift of them i love the red that they have and then the outer lining of that beautiful green color so so beautiful two to three and a half feet tall huge and then they can get 18 inches to three feet wide with the branching and um I haven't seen them get quite that large. They did get about the like three foot mark for me. And then they spread probably about two and a half feet. So yeah, I mean, almost, so pretty good size. Um, I love this coleus. I love all coleus. Coleus is actually one of the very first things that I ever grew um, in my garden like seven years ago. <laughs> so first thing I ever grew, I have a special place for coleus in the garden and color blaze the color blaze wicked witch one is an amazing one to grow in the garden um, i love it backing things i love mixing coleus with a whole bunch of other coleus so like a drift of the wicked witch and then a drift of another coleus behind that like one that gets taller like the um lime oh my gosh what is the coleus that i love to grow that i have a whole bunch of cuttings of i don't know either way coleus like backed with another coleus like a bright green one so beautiful absolutely amazing the color blaze series is all amazing and there's not one coleus that i dislike from proven winners i love all of them I, I just love any coleus if we're being completely honest i also love the name of this one wicked witch it's just it's fun <laughs> i do have to say that i did not when i first started gardening understand the difference between annuals and perennials and um, I was so sad when I killed my first coleus because I fell in love with that plant. It grew big and beautiful. It wasn't the Wicked Witch. And then it died in the winter. And I was like, oh my God, what am I doing? I don't know how to garden. Why did this plant die? I just killed it randomly. Um, no, it wasn't my fault. <laughs> <laughs> it was the plant's life cycle. But after that, um, I became obsessed with learning about plants and coleus has a special place in my heart because that's one of the plants that taught me a very big lesson that all plants have a life cycle. And so coleus is it. The Wicked Witch is a beautiful, beautiful one. If you're able to get your hands on it, you will love it. This needs shade. It can handle some morning sun. If you get any of that afternoon sun on it though, it's gonna be so mad at you. It will not appreciate you. It won't think you're funny. It will just droop and it will be sad and it will get burnt. So this is a shade lover. I always try to plant it in an area that gets a little bit of morning sun, that's totally fine. But by afternoon, it needs all the protection that you can give it. I will even notice it wilting on very hot days. So I try to splash a little water down extra by its roots just to like, just, just to make it a little happier with me. <laughs> The next one is another plant that has a very special place in my heart. It is Sweetheart Caroline Sweetheart Mahogany Ornamental Sweet Potato Vine. <laughs> that is a mouthful. Um, this is new for this year. I was able to get my hands on it last year and it is an amazing sweet potato vine. I have grown multiple, multiple different types of sweet potato vine. Um, I've grown them in every color possible except there is one that I, this is another plant that I could do a whole video just about sweet potato vines. Sweet potato vines and coleus to me are two like rock stars in the garden and the, they're amazing. So the Sweetheart Caroline Sweetheart Mahogany was one that I really, really loved. It gets six 
to 16 inches tall and 20 inches to three feet long. Um, mine we grew in the aviary i grew it in a window basket it actually produced some really big potatoes you don't want to eat them they're they're ornamental they don't taste good um and the the um the growth that it had put on was absolutely amazing it wasn't one that was like overwhelming i've grown some other ones where like you have to trim on it and trim on it and trim on it because it just like produces so much vine that it's more of a nuisance than it is like something that you actually want in your garden and so this one stays a more like compact size but still gives really big impact i loved the like deep burgundy foliage of it and then the new foliage is green so you get these little pops of like a chartreuse green and it's really really beautiful this is one that can take part sun um, i would say the same like is true with coleus how you want to just give it morning sun if you're going to give it sun if you give it that hot afternoon sun it's going to wilt and it's not going to be very happy it will rebound no problem but you don't want to like stress it too much so i try to keep it somewhere that it gets a little shade from the afternoon um, last year i grew the sweetheart caroline sweetheart mahogany one and I grew that in an area that is pretty much full shade. I grew it right next to some ferns and it still did really, really well. So even if it's an area that's in shade, um, I think it'll perform pretty well. I wouldn't put it somewhere where it's gonna get like deep shade. This was an area that got um, like indirect light. So it was still very bright. It just didn't have any sun like hitting it. I only added one of these to my list of plants to be on the lookout for, but um, in secret, just like the coleus, there's going to be a lot that I'm on the lookout for because they have some really beautiful ones. I'm just going to name them off really, really quick. They have a tricolor one that I really want to grow. And then they have a couple that are called upside and they have vines and they climb. I want climbing sweet potato vines really badly. <laughs> they also have a jet black one that I really want to find. The next one on the list um, is one that I'm pretty excited to find. I really hope I can find this one. This is the Superbina Pink Cashmere. I love Superbinas so much. I've grown Superbina Whiteout. I've grown Superbina, I think, Sparkling Amethyst. And I grew another one called like Coral or something like that. I can't remember. I've grown three different varieties and this is one called Pink Cashmere that I really wanna find. I love pinks in the garden. I just think that they're so beautiful and they fit so well in the garden. And they're easy to find. Pinks and purples, so easy to find in flowers. This one gets six inches tall up to 12 inches tall and it spreads 18 to two and a half feet. That is a good size plant. So um, the one that I saw at Janie's, like I said, I can't remember which kind it was, but it was so beautiful. This one is new for this year. And so I think that I'll be able to find it up at Wintour Gardens. They had a lot of stuff that was new for this year. Um, last year, um, they were like a trial, they were able to like trial a whole bunch of things, I guess. And so I'm hoping that they have their hands on a lot of these things. And this super being a pink cashmere, so stunning. I would like to grow it in the landscape. I would like to grow it. Um, I'm trying to do big drifts of things this year. Every single year I get to the garden center and I want like 25 different plants. And so I buy one of each plant instead of buying like 10 of one plant and having like a big spectacular show of everything, I mess up and I buy one plant. And the one plant looks pretty. Um, it does not look as good as 10 plants next to each other. So my goal for this year is these seven plants is to buy them in bulk instead of just buying one of the plants. So. The garden budget is a little more this year than it was last year. <laughs> and I feel like last year it was already insane. Either way, this one, you want to plant it in an area that it gets full sun. The more sun you give it, the happier it is going to be. It's just like the super tunias. They need a lot of sun. They need a lot of light. They need a lot of fertilizer. It's a really good sized plant. And I think it would be really pretty in a drift. I've got that one bed that's kind of close to the aviary that needs that it's full sun and so it needs things that can handle full sun and I think that this would be really pretty they have it in a pot with some super tunia hoopla and it looks like a salvia of some sort I can't see I don't know which variety of salvia that is but um I think that that would be a really pretty combo I think I'm gonna look for that combo <laughs> that'll be the ones where I buy one of each plant oh okay I'm getting distracted the next one is another one that I haven't grown but I would really like to find it I've never been a fan of begonias until probably about six months ago I started kind of liking them <laughs> so this one is called double delight apple blossom begonia it is really pretty it is so beautiful I love this color this like peachy creamy pinky color it's that is my jam of 
like pink colors. I, I think it's so beautiful. So this one gets 14 inches tall up to two feet wide. That is huge for a begonia. I did not know that they got that big. Um, I would love to find this. This one needs shade. It says that it can handle part sun. I probably wouldn't put it somewhere where it's going to get that afternoon sun. This would be another one of those ones that's going to go where it's only going to get that morning sun. And it needs protection. It, begonias, for at least for me, when I had grown them five years ago, they needed that protection from that hot afternoon sun. I know that a lot of these things have been improved, but oh, this one is so beautiful. I would love to do this one in a container or in the landscape, probably in the like side yard, the long skinny side yard that we have, um, do like a big drift of those. I think that that would be really, really pretty too. This one, I just loved how some of them were double, some of them were single. I love the size. This one is new for this year. We'll see if I can find it. I think this one is probably going to be the hardest one for me to get my hands on, but I still think that it would be, um, I, I'm still gonna look for it because this one, I saw it on the website and it just like stopped me the like colors of it were so pretty and like I don't know it looks like vibrant but muted does that make sense either way I'm looking for this one proven winners also says that this one is scented so it's really good for like hanging baskets so um maybe if, if I could find a couple of them to be able to put them in hanging baskets on our front porch that way you get like a nice like scent by the front door when you first come in for me I love doing that bringing things that have like a high scent by the front door so as you come in and out you know you get a whiff of it and so the fact that it's like super fragrant, super beautiful, and gets absolutely massive, it's a triple win for me. This is the one that I really wanna find. I've heard of the Rocapoco line that they have being a really good one. Um, it just never, they never spoke to me the way that this one spoke to me. So I'm really hoping I can find this one. I'm gonna read this really quick. It says, it performs well in full sun in the Northeast. Southern growers will need to provide some afternoon shade Increased sun tolerance makes this begonia versatile for using containers, hanging baskets, window baskets, and monoculture containers. So there you go. I will definitely be giving it protection. <laughs> the very last one that we're gonna be on the lookout for this year is Euphorbia. I'm going to be on the lookout for any of these varieties, but specifically Diamond Snow. There's Diamond Snow, Diamond Frost, and Diamond Mountain. The Diamond Snow and the Diamond Frost stay the same size. Um, one just stays more like white and has more blooms, where the other one is a little more airy, and then Diamond Mountain gets much larger, is just very, very airy, and it has less blooms on it. So it gets a bigger plant, it gets like two to three feet tall, where the Diamond Snow gets 12 to 18 inches tall. So there's a huge size difference in them, but I like the Diamond Snow because it's very compact and it is very white and it stays bright white. Um, I've grown the Diamond Mountain before, I believe. I loved it, I loved it in the garden. I grew Diamond Snow last year and um, silly me, I planted it somewhere where I had some bulbs for peonies and dahlias and they came up and they gave it too much shade so it didn't get enough sun. This needs full sun. They get 18 inches tall, 18 inches wide, and it wants as much sun as possible. You do have to be careful because if you break the stems on it, it does secrete like a white sticky sap, and um, some people can be like very sensitive to that on their skin. It doesn't seem to bother me, but it can bother some people with their skin. It's like a latexy thing or something like that. So that is something to be mindful of. But the diamond snow to me just makes such an impact, and it is so beautiful in the landscape. It had kind of like popped through some of the dahlias that I had growing. Um, I didn't get any pictures of it because the dahlia was covered in powdery mildew. <laughs> and so it, it did not look very good. But the Diamond Snow Euphorbia looked absolutely amazing. So this is the last one I'm going to be on the lookout for. This one should be very easy for me to find. I have found Euphorbia pretty much every single year without even having to like look for it and go on the hunt. I just kind of like stumble across this one. So I think this is a very easy one for um, them to get out in this area at least. I just love this one in the landscape. I love it in containers. I think it's really pretty. I would like to grow this one. This one actually might be really pretty in the window box underneath um, the big front window, the window box that we just put in. That would be really pretty there, I think. I just, I don't know, I love Euphorbia. I love the way it looks. It's very cottagey, and if you get the Diamond Mountain, that one is very airy and flowy. You still get the white on it, but it's um, it's just more airy. So I, I won't be mad if I find any of them. 
I just would like to find some more of the Euphorbia because it just, to me, brings such a big impact into the garden. So that is my list of seven annuals that I will be on the lookout for this year. I am really excited to go hunting for these. Um, I'm really hoping that I find a couple of them. I'm sure I'll be able to at least find two or three of them. If I found all seven, that would be very exciting. It would also break the bank. <laughs> there would be the whole budget for the rest of the year. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I would love to know what plant you guys are on the lookout for this year. Maybe I'll discover a new one. I hope you guys found a new one today to add to your list to find this year. I will see you all in the next video. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.